hi guys welcome to my channel if you're new here welcome 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 this is such a happy place to be so please like this video subscribe to this channel if you haven't and join the family we're a family of love we're a family of light and you'll definitely get to see all of that as you subscribe to the channel and click the notification button to get notified anytime a new video drops as you can see from the title of today's video this video is about the expectations that people have when they relocate and what they actually meet in reality so if you'd like to know more definitely keep watching <music> First off, before I go further into today's video, the reason why there may be some shadows or there may be some light reflection is I've been trying to shoot this video with natural light, but it's been raining consistently for a while now and I've not been able to shoot. So I had two options, either I do not shoot the video or I shoot the video with the lights that I could work with. So please bear with me, work with me, I'm still starting, I'm growing my channel, growing content. First truth I'm going to be talking about that people are not aware of before they travel is truth on accommodation. A lot of people think that when they travel, they will just meet an accommodation space that is open for them. Unfortunately, 2022 proved a lot of people wrong. Currently, right now, there are a lot of people who have moved to the UK for school in particular who do not have a place to stay. So most people, when they relocate, they first stay in an Airbnb or they stay with their friends, spending the time, they get an accommodation. But this does not always work. With the massive number of persons who are emigrating out of their country you need to know that the migration is not just from nigeria there are a lot of people who are also migrating from india there are people migrating from asia so taking into consideration all of this number of people and number of persons migrating from africa alone besides nigeria from other countries within africa so it's like a lot of people coming into the country at the same point in time and then the uk also has its own citizens you Currently, right now, where I, I am, university released a statement at some point that if you do not have accommodation, you may proceed to defer your admission until next year when you would have accommodation sorted out. Right, if you're planning to resume with the January intake or you're planning to resume with the September intake, my advice is you start planning on your accommodation ASAP. Start working on your accommodation as soon as you can because there's nothing like if you come here, you're going to be able to sort the accommodation. Now, the good thing about the accommodation is if you do check for an accommodation online that you like, there are so many um, platforms that you can use to check for accommodation. You can check out Unite Students. You can check out Students Roost. You can check out Amber Students. These are three main accommodation websites that you can check out for if you're coming for studentship. If you do have dependents, they also have studio apartments. They have other form of apartment that may be compatible for you. So just check out their websites. And, and like, it's easy to sort it out before you come because what they just need is a deposit payment for most of this accommodation. So the deposit fee is usually not too, not too expensive the deposit fee is about 250 pounds or less so you could pay for the deposit fee and if you eventually come down here and see that it's not something you like you can get your deposit back the deposit refund but at least you know you do have an accommodation if you're afraid or bothered that maybe what you would what you see online is not going to be the same thing with what you're going to meet in reality you could just pay the deposit fee or better still check the reviews of the accommodation online for every accommodation, there's always review. Google has its review for the accommodation. Um, there's a website. I'll try to find the name of the website and also put it or put it in the link in the description link below. So you can check the review that people have of the accommodation below. So you also have to look at what people state in the review. Is the review are people complaining about the facility or are they complaining about the services of people? You know, services of people, people can understand services differently. Services is subjective, but when it comes to facilities, if people are constantly complaining about the facilities, then that's something to be concerned about. I think I'll just make a video generally on accommodation so people can have that. So the next point I'm going to be talking about, which is one of the things that people don't talk about when they come here, is the weather. The weather is is a lot, you guys. The weather is a lot. It gets really cold. Like I said, it's been raining. I tried to film this video with natural light, which would have taken away the shadows and make the lighting come out well. But it's been raining. So the weather is something that you also need to, to prepare for. I mean, I know that people say this often, but I'm saying it again so you know that it's actually something that is really serious. So generally, students usually come in in January or they come in in September. So if you're coming in for the January intake, the January intake is at the peak of winter. That's when winter period is just 
just like starting fully so or that's when winter period is getting more intense let me put it that way so most people when they come in january they they come they either get a cold they get a fever in the season of covid 19 it was even very easy for them to even get covid so and you need to understand that the weather is something you need to be really prepared for in glasgow here yeah, in scotland pretty much it rains almost every day you always have to have an umbrella on you or have a raincoat or have a, a winter jacket that is susceptible to the rain if you're coming from a tropical climate or from a tropical region like nigeria where the weather is about 27 degrees and above and you come in here the weather here is let me put it in perspective for you the weather here is from 10 degrees downward sometimes it's zero sometimes it's negative so you need to really get yourself prepared mentally that it's going to be really cold prepare for it also when you're packing so when you're packing you don't want to pack natives you don't want to pack things that will not really be suitable for you in the weather if you're coming much later on in september september intake might be easier for you because you're going to come in and towards the tail end of the summer season so you're still going to get acclimatized into the weather and into the season very well or not even very well but it's a little bit easier because you're not coming at the peak of the cold the next point i'm going to talk about is walking people and <laughs> oh my goodness you will walk w a l k you will walk because so, most times yet yeah, there are no bikes okay i understand that maybe for people coming from lagos in nigeria you, you may not you may not necessarily be able to relate to it but there are no bikes there are no tricycles what they just have is either you're going with the bus you're going with the subway or you're going with a private cab a private taxi private taxis are expensive well it's relative if you like to spend so much money you could be spending money but even if you want to be taking private taxis everywhere it's not sustainable it's not something you can do every single distance time. between places are not not so far and not too short so most times you have to walk you walk from place to place walk from your house to the bus station walk from your house to the train station walk from your house to the grocery store because it's not even a, a wise it's not going to be a reasonable decision for you to you know t take a private taxi or take a bus to the place where you are going to when it's somewhere that you can easily assess by walking so just get ready to walk get fit good get good trainers that you can use to walk those distances next point i'm going to say is study so a lot of people who come here on a tier four students visa most people don't know that they're actually coming here to study so you come here as a student on a student's visa and you forget that you're actually coming here to study so people come here thinking i'm going to work i'm going to work now i'm going to work um, 20 hours or more because if you get a tier 4 student visa you're not permitted to work over 20 hours so people come here thinking i'm going to work to pay for my tuition fees i'm going to work to pay for my accommodation fee i'm going to and people also come here with dependents also think like that so i need to work to you know cater for my dependents but they forget most times that you're coming on a student's visa which means you have to study because if you do not study you will fail <laughs> that sounded harsh but the truth is when you're coming here on a student's visa, you need to realize you're actually coming here to study. You're coming as a student. So it means that you need to study to pass the exams. And you may not necessarily be targeting distinction or targeting a very high grade. But the fact is, you still need to work. There are coursework. There are essays that must be submitted. There are exams that must be written. So even if it's an open exam, you still need to have an idea of what the question is saying or even know where to find the answer to the exam question so these are things you really need to factor in so even if you intend to come here to work to pay for your tuition fees because i understand not everybody might get a scholarship or not everybody might get substantial funding that will lessen how much they need to pay for their fees but what you need to understand is you're actually coming here to study so you can imagine people who are coming here after 10 years when they've stopped studying after 10 years when they left school so you really need to factor that in that as a student coming here you're also coming here next point i'm going to talk about is the job market oh my goodness now the job market is applicable to everybody the job market is applicable if you're looking out for part-time work to maybe pay for your tuition fees similar to the last point that i said if you're looking out for graduate jobs as regards your postgraduate visa and um sponsorship for when you're completely done with your master's program 
something you really need to consider is the job market now the job market is really large and there are so many people trying to get into the job market so that's another factor you need to consider when you're coming and you especially if you intend to work to pay for your tuition fees and to work to pay for your other living expenses so you need to be coming in here with your a game that being said you need to take advantage of every opportunity you have as an international student i once made a video on the opportunities that you can leverage on as an international student please do well to watch that video because that video is going to really help you leverage on your chances as an international student and make the most of your time while you're here so that would help you get good part-time paying job it would also help your chances of getting a good job once you graduate and also help you in getting sponsorship for your postgraduate fees the next point i'm also going to talk about is money the reason why i'm going to talk about money is because it's also linked to the job market situation a lot of people come here with the intent that i'm going to um work to pay for my tuition fees or i'm going to work to pay for my living expenses i need you to understand that it's not as easy as people make it seem understand that some people may come with dependents and then it's a dependent who is working for them a dependent could be maybe a person is married they come with their wife it's not always as easy as people think it is if you're coming alone by yourself you have you have a maximum of 20 hours to work legally i know that some people may tell you don't you can exceed that 20 hours but you really need to be careful the united kingdom right now they are not on a dashing out visa spray so right now the information that people even have is that they have recruited so many people into the immigration force so that when it's time to get people when it's time for people to extend their um, current students visa to the postgraduate visa they will turn down a lot of people for the most insignificant reasons like working over 20 hours so you really can't even take your chances of working ex working above the 20 hours that is stated or, or is provided for you to work so these are things that you really need to consider how do you intend to search for your funds legally one of the last point i'm going to talk about that people don't usually mention when they are here is loneliness so when you're here it's very easy to get lonely if you were introverted before and you come into the united kingdom your intro your introverted nature is not going to work being an introvert and moving into a new city or moving into a new country by yourself where you do not have any other person is not going to work let me put it out to you right i can tell you from experience that if you want to leverage on your opportunities you have to put yourself out there put yourself out there in what ways like i said watch that video for the last time watch that video to know how best to put yourself out there right now we've come to the end of this video i hope you learned one or two things i hope you also learned that your expectation might not exactly be what you meet in the reality the truth however is that regardless of whatever it is that the world is facing we know that as believers we are, we do have an upper end I pray that whenever it is that you do decide to come, your reality is definitely going to surpass your expectation in all the positive ways. Until next time, remember to like this video, leave a comment down below. Is there any of the points I've listed out that you also need assistance on? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you do have any other questions or any video you'd like me to film on, also let me know in the comment section below and I'll be sure to take a look at it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.